The Pinnacles Desert is located a little south of the town of Cervantes on the west coast. It's part of the Nambung National Park. And while the pinnacle structures are by far the most famous part of the park, there's also Lake Thetis, which contains some of the oldest living organisms known to science. These organisms are called stromatolites and are estimated to have existed on Earth for 3,500 million years. They're not the most interesting life forms to observe, but as Bill Bryson once said, it's not the sight of stromatolites that makes them exciting, it's the idea of them. Lake Thetis has been isolated from the sea for about 4,800 years. The highly saline lake is an ideal environment for the stromatolites. A boardwalk at the lake allows visitors to get close to the endangered stromatolites without disturbing them or damaging them in any way. The pinnacles were once thought to be the remains of an ancient city and may have appeared on Dutch maps as early as 1658. There are about 150,000 individual structures. The pinnacles are the fossilised remains of a forest that now just jut from the sandy soil. There is some disagreement among scientists about exactly how the formations occurred, but a general consensus seems to be that minerals soaking down into the decaying root systems and holes left by large tree roots led to the spectacular outcrops. The DEC NatureBase website gives the following information about the formation of the pinnacles. The raw material for the limestone of the pinnacles came from seashells in an earlier epoch, rich in marine life. These shells were broken down into lime-rich sands which were brought ashore by waves and then carried inland by wind to form high mobile dunes. Three old systems of sand dunes run parallel to the W Bay coast, marking ancient shorelines. The oldest of these, known as the Spearwood Dune System, is characterised by yellow or brownish sands. In winter, rain, which is slightly acidic, dissolves small amounts of calcium carbonate as it percolates down through the sand. As the dune dries out during summer, this is precipitated as a cement around the grains of sand in the lower levels of the dunes, binding them together and eventually producing a hard limestone rock known as Tamala limestone. At the same time, vegetation that became established on the surface aided this process. Plant roots stabilised the surface and encouraged a more acidic layer of soil and humus containing decayed plant and animal matter to develop over the remaining quartz sand. The acidic soil accelerated the leaching process and a hard layer of calcrete formed over the softer limestone below. Cracks which formed in the calcrete were exploited by plant roots. When water seeped down along these channels, the softer limestone beneath was slowly leached away and the channels gradually filled with quartz sand. The subsurface erosion continued until only the most resilient columns remained. The pinnacles then are eroded remnants of the formerly thick bed of limestone. The Aboriginal name for the area, Nambang, means winding or crooked and refers to the river running through the park. In the late 1880s, a stock route from Dongara to Perth passed through the area, and in the early 1900s, local farmers mined back guano from caves. James Mitchell, later Governor Mitchell, visited the caves and was so impressed with what he saw, he led efforts to have most caves on the south coast protected by law. The first areas in the park to be protected were around the Nambung River in 1956. This was later added to and the National Park was created in 1968. If you're visiting the park with your caravan or camper trailer in tow, then be prepared to drop the van off in the parking area. If you don't want to unhitch your vehicle, 
then you need to take the 1.2 kilometre walk trail. Other attractions in the park are found only by those prepared to walk. Vehicle access has been deliberately restricted and walking is the only way to see many of the areas in the park. If you decide to explore this area on foot, be aware that this is tick country. Careful self-examination is advised when you return from your explorations to remove any ticks that may have attached themselves. Other attractions in the area include Kangaroo Point, Hangover Bay, Coloured Desert, as well as a variety of plants and animals that live in the area. An interesting book on the creation of the National Park was written by the first ranger to work there. It's called Nambang, Here We Come by A. Passfield. <laughs>